Welcome to Operation Morbid Vampire. Ah, ah, ah. I was thinking maybe we do the entire review in this accent, but the longer it goes, the less it sounds like Dracula, and the more it sounds like it's an Italian, and it's kind of offensive. Ah, ah, okay. Let's, uh, let's move on into Operation Morbid Vampire. As you may recall, the Council has tasked us with getting the South African scientist, who is strangely Asian, out and into XCOM's custody for protection. It seems he's been scanning them, and that's really pissing the aliens off. These escort missions are really tedious, as all escort missions are, because you gotta make sure that these guys take no damage whatsoever. So we're gonna try and go out the back and run along the right side of the map without having to do much combat whatsoever. And this is the part where you all get to meet a fun new enemy. I put fun in quotation marks, so I'm pretty sure you could figure that out, because voice inflection is cool that way. This well-dressed alien, who just got orbital dropped right into our backfield, is called a Thin Man. Thin Men have some of the quirkiest and most annoying abilities in the game. Quirk number one, only the outsider seems to be more accurate than them. Quirk number two is that on council missions, the computer really likes to pepper the battlefield with these things, like hateful sprinkles on the cupcake that is this map. Upon sticking the landing, they go into Overwatch, thus stopping any sort of progress you want to make. This is considered rude. But this is why we keep Jimmy and Evil Emmy-san around, to teach bad aliens good manners. Now we get to see quirk number three of Thin Men. Whenever they die, their corpse explodes into just a wonderful cloud of poisonous gas. If you step into or through this cloud of gas, you get poisoned and will be taking 1 HP of damage per turn. And if there is anything my video should have taught you by now, it should be the value of one hit point. After that little escapade, we start with this little boring task of getting everyone around the building, while we leave Evil Emmy-san within the building. I leave Evil Emmy-san in this building to give me some leverage in case we get ambushed somewhere and I need her to rush in to battle. I don't push her through though, because I really fear that there's an alien on the other side of this window. So we're just gonna wait until she's needed. So, while Evil Emmy-san has fun near the door, we let the rest of the team deal with another suborbital Thin Man drop. Oh my guys, he's right there in front of you. Okay, Jimmy, finish this. Or, or, or don't. Okay, DJ Sucre, you're up to bat again. Let's see what you got this time. Holy crap, what you got? That shot is a whole lot. Though really, I would have appreciated the crit before it had 1 HP, but as Hannibal Smith has pointed out, overkill is underrated. With that thin man now a dissipating cloud of poison and the Indian food he had for lunch, it's time to deal with the window situation. So I'm convinced the moment that Evil Emmy Sun walks through that door, she's going to trigger an alien. I say an alien because these council missions tend to eschew multiple aliens in a group. It's important that when you're getting ready for an engagement, that you have a plan for each contingency. If the alien responds and jumps through the window, well then we can just run and gun with Evil Emmy Sun and have her blow it away with the shotgun. If it runs to the right, then we'll have the rest of the team deal with the alien. If it goes left and into the building we spawned from, well, then the team can just reorient and have a couple of overwatches ready to kill it when it comes through our doorway. The worst situation for us would be if it ran straight backwards, because in that situation we then have to slowly stalk it and risk triggering more enemies. Regardless, we have a plan for all four contingencies, and we are ready to go. Evil lemmy charges in, the Thin Man shows off his gymnastic skills, and then he goes to the left. Looks like it's going to be our Overwatch shooting gallery plan. So we start moving everyone into position for their Overwatch shots. Unfortunately, by the time he's going to be getting over here, Looks like we're only going to be able to have two people ready. But he's going to be charging in through the door, so these should be some pretty high chance shots. And sure enough, there he is, an easy target right in the middle of the... Okay, um, uh, the, well, certainly we can't miss both of them. Huh. Well, this is bad. And now Evil Lemmy sans going to die. This is very... Oh! Oh my! Yes! Okay! Well, we may suck at shooting, but we don't suck at living. Go us! For those of you who are confused as to what just happened, every time your character should die, there's a very slight chance that they might, instead of dying, get incapacitated. You then have three turns before they bleed out. If you get them healed up before then, congratulations! You didn't lose a soldier, they're just going to be in the hospital for a very long time. They also get a permanent negative 15 to their will, 
thus making them more likely to panic. But hey, Evil emmy sans never shown any propensity to panic. Hmm. Well, that's a bridge we'll burn when we cross it. Regardless, our team has shown the inability to hit this guy when he's moving, so we need to get him while he's standing still. Sounds like a perfect job for our assault to sneak behind and... Evil emmy sans our assault. So, we have a problem. In times like this, it's important to remember Splice Strategy's axiom number two. When in doubt, frag out. And now that this thin man is as exposed as a sectoid, it's time to finish him off. Jimmy, kill him. With that taken care of, Beetle Burr runs in there, rubs some aloe vera on the back of Evil emmy -san's neck, and she's going to be right as rain. As soon as we finish the mission, she spends like two weeks in the hospital. Now that Evil emmy -san's on the path to recovery, we're going to leave her body there and push forward with the mission. Beetle Burr and DJ Sucre escort the good doctor up to the top of this observatory, and we're now close to where the doctor can run to the extraction point. This of course means it's time for another Thin Man paratrooper to make his presence known. Unfortunately for it, Beetle Burr is an aspiring photographer and specializes in headshots. With that now done, I move Jimmy up and have a very awkward looking interaction with a sectoid. Uh, hi. So now, Jimmy's flanked. I would worry about it, but unfortunately for the sectoid, it's over. DJ Sucre has the high ground. With that done, it's now time to see how close the good doctor is to escaping in this mess. And from the looks of it, he's one diagonal square away from being able to sprint to safety. So we're just going to have him casually jump through this window, what a hardcore scientist, to get into range of, oh, hmm. All thoughts of sprinting to safety are done, as we're going to hide behind the telescope again. I don't want anyone dying to a single sectoid, so I orient the rest of the team to where they'll have full cover and simple firing lanes. As we move closer and closer, the alien just doesn't show up anywhere. He's shy. But he finally makes an appearance and decides to take a shot at DJ Sucre. He missed, which leaves us the perfect opportunity to let Jimmy let fly with a grenade. And with that kill, Jimmy has earned a promotion. Congrats, Jimmy. With that alien gone kaputs, we're free to move the doctor up and let South Africa's best Asian astronomer parkourist show off his moves. One turn later, he reaches the safety of the Sky Ranger. Thank you for coming to my aid. I only hope my data is beneficial to the cause. I hope so too, Asian scientist stereotype. I hope so too. So ends Operation More. Why isn't the mission ending? Oh, mother pus bucket. If the mission isn't over, that means there's a straggler alien somewhere. So now I gotta play a tedious game of hide-and-go-murder with this stupid loitering alien. This is gonna get painfully slow, so let's speed the video up a bit so you guys don't have to endure the torture I did. So yeah, we walk around a bit, and after a while, boom, we find the alien. And I'm surprised to find it's aliens. Whatever, they're both gonna die. With DJ Sucre out in the open, and Jimmy nowhere I can really use her, I move Beetle Burr up. And it seems he took exception to my joke about the fact he can't hit anything that's moving. Well, you sure showed me, Beetle Burr. I'm glad to see that negative reinforcement is working. For the other alien, I try and move DJ Sucre up to get the kill, but, uh, yeah, that's not a very good shot. So we move Beetle Burr up, and he puts the nail through Operation Morbid Vampire's coffin. So, the team grabs Evil lemmy body, drags it, gently, back to the Sky Ranger, and we head back home. And though Evil lemmy going to be in the medical bay for 12 days, that's not going to stop Beetle Burr and Jimmy from getting promotions. For Jimmy's promotion, I've got a tough decision to make. This used to be a no-brainer for me, squad side all the way. But in Enemy Within, they've changed it so that Snapshot is much more appealing. I can let her shoot her sniper rifle and move with the team, and she only gets a negative 10 to her shot penalty. That's pretty good, especially with some of the late upgrades that snipers can get. You can pull off some pretty sick combos. I've seen it before. But in the end, Squad Sight lets the sniper shoot across the map. That is something no other class can do, while every other class can run and shoot at the same time. So, at least for this sniper, I'm getting Jimmy Squad Sight. I have a similar conundrum with 03 Beat Ober. It used to be Sprinter, no questions asked. Moving three extra tiles provides you just some great flexibility. But the new version of Covering Fire will actually let you interrupt an alien shot with an Overwatch shot. 
That means you can deny an alien a chance to ever even get the damage off. That's awesome. But given the alien's AI, they're typically not going to be taking shots unless they're already behind hard cover. And you get a penalty to all your overwatch shots, so you're less likely to make them. For that reason, I'm going to stick with the flexibility of Sprinter, but I do want to try out covering fire with later supports. In addition to the promotions, we also got a Cherno Alpha badge that I'm promptly going to forget to reward, and we got our two scientists and 140 double dollars as a reward. With the cash reward, plus the fact I never built a satellite, oops, um, I have a lot of extra cash. I decide to use this extra cash to build two power generators and an access lift, along with doing some excavation. Once it comes time to build the fun stuff, I want to make sure that I have enough power and space to do so. After that, it's time to scan the planet, and our meld recombination research completes. I think we need a cinematic to celebrate. So, what is it, Doctor? A sci-fi Triforce. A Cyforce, if you will. Remarkable. The crystalline structure housed within the canister is actually a suspension containing billions of cybernetic nanomachines. You could call them micro machines? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My team's analysis indicates these microscopic robots are capable of assembling mechanical structures with unprecedented efficiency. With further study and some specialized facilities, we may be able to engineer a sort of cyber suit that interfaces with the human body. It's all the rage in Japan. Is more interested in the possibility of physically altering the tissue itself, incorporating aspects of the alien's own genetic adaptations by using the. Now you're going to give me a sectoid kidney, the aren't you? The commander will have to decide where the greatest advantage lies. Darn straight. Is there anything you agree on? Given the apparent purpose of the nanites, they allow combining organic materials with one another, or with machines. We have at least agreed to call them Meld. Okay, you two totally have been practicing the presentation, haven't you? That handoff there did not feel organic at all. And holy crap, the engineers really got the better of that design. Bellator and Machina indeed. Now that meld recombination is complete, we have to click through all the new options that we have, and then we need to decide what to research next. That decision always comes down to what can kill me next. And what can kill me next is a medium-sized UFO. So we're doing experimental warfare, which will give us access to the foundry, and let us build Phoenix cannons for our planes. I expected that would be a priority research task, Commander. What? No, you didn't. You put xenobiology as the priority research target. You're a liar. After that, I scan, and then the power generator finishes, and then I remember I actually want to build a cybernetics lab so I can build mechs. So we do that. So then we scan, then our other power generator completes, then we scan, and then our access tunnel completes. Kind of tedious. Tedium aside, we then start excavating to the side so that we'll have plenty of room when the time comes to build. I think you see a theme. So then we scan again, and Australia makes us an offer. They'll give us 200 space dollars if we give them a satellite. Now we don't have a satellite ready, and typically I don't even bother launching them until, you know, it's going to be the end of the month, so I wasn't going to wait till the end of April for this. But the whole reason we get satellites is for better coverage and better money. And 200 double space dollars isn't easy to turn down. So I change up my plans a little bit. I start building a satellite so that next month I can give Australia an early satellite and get the money. Then it's back to scanning, and time for another round of abductions. France is willing to give us engineers, Australia is, again, willing to give us money, and Mexico City is willing to give us a heavy. I don't really need a heavy right now, so the choice is between France and Australia. And while I almost always advocate getting the engineers, I'm in a bit of a quandary here. Because of the way this shook out, I don't have the ability to launch a satellite at the end of the month to calm down a country that's, you know, rioting. And if we look at the world map, we see that Asia is the closest to going over the edge. I really can't afford that right now. What I can afford, if I have an extra 200 double space dollar bucks, is I can afford a workshop, and a workshop will allow me to get five more engineers. Pretty good deal. So ultimately I decided on Australia while making a promise to myself that that money's going straight to a workshop. With Evil Emison in the med bay, I still want my assault, so I'm going to disobey my normal two guys, two girls rule and bring Citrus Architect along. 
I also remember to actually go to the engineering bay this time and uh, build the scope for Jimmy. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. Have a scope. And with that, our fun little band of warriors piles into the Sky Ranger and we head to Australia. Please join us again next week as we save Brisbane's local pizzeria from the aliens in Operation Sonic Spark. Until then, even though the tower jockeys are telling us again, mate, the runways are too short, I say again, mate, we're coming in. <laughs>